Uh, look, speaking after his side's 2-1 defeat at home to Greece on Thursday, Carsley explained he was hoping to return to the under-21s. I was quite surprised after the last camp in terms of like the job's mine and, and like it's mine to lose and all the rest of it. Now, my remit has been clear from the start. I'm doing three camps and then, you know, ho hopefully the I'll, I'll be going back to the, the 21s. So it's, it's, it's neither, it's, it's neither uh, almost no impact. Uh, he was then asked on Saturday whether he actually applied for the England job when Gareth Southgate left. No, I didn't formally apply for it. And because, hopefully, no. <laughs> because I've been on the 21s, I mean, I'm really happy doing my job. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm an employee of, a, of the FA and, and I was asked to take the, the senior team, which is a, a privilege. It was the proudest moment of my career um, so far. Really, really honoured uh, with, the, with the chance to, to manage the, the senior team. I believe the, the coach that comes in has got a really good chance of winning. Um, and we deserve the best one that's out there. So it sounded as if his heart was set on returning to the under-21s. But he decided to do a U-turn on that when asked whether he was ruling himself out of the job. Definitely not. I think, um, you know, I tried, I tried to make it as clear as I could. Um, Any time we speak like this, you know, my remit was for, for three camps, the, the, the Nations League. Um, the point I was trying to make is that you know, it's, uh, it's one of the top jobs in the world. Um, you know, obviously I'm not, I'm not part of the process, but... Um, you know, it, de it deserves a top coach. So many people took Carsley's comments about still being on the path to becoming a world-class coach as him effectively ruling himself out of the England job. He was asked to clarify those comments. The point that I was trying to make, which um, I suppose it's more like the hope hopefully comment, um, it, was the, it was the fact that this is a world-class job. Um, this will be up there with the best jobs in, in football. Um, so, the, you know, whoever gets it is going to be at a, high, at a high level. You've obviously been very reluctant to say yes or no, I want the job or I don't want the job. Is it, why are you so reluctant to answer that? I'm definitely, so I'm definitely reluctant because in the past when I've done, when I've done this caretaker stroke interim role, um, I've gone so far down the, I don't want the job, that I've not done the job. I've, I've actually not done the job. It's important that I keep an open mind. Uh, Lee Carsley. Um... Well, I'm confused. I'm not sure if you are, Tony. I'm even confused about that last line when he says, you know, when I wanted the job in the past, I've gone so far down the line of, mm. of looking for it that I haven't done the job. I, I, I don't understand that either. Didn't that happen at Brentford when he was there in a coaching role that he announced quite, quite quickly that he didn't want the job? Mm. Um, it's a strange one. I, I don't know how the players would feel. Do they know? Have any indication of how he's feeling about the job? Probably not. Um, they're learning probably by the way we're hearing by his post-match comments, and it's it it doesn't I don't think bodes well for Lee to to be contradicting himself in some manner. I mean, I think he doesn't he, need to. No, I think he was perceived as being really popular with the players with the under twenty ones. Yeah, and I suspect the same thing will go. To be honest, with the the senior side as well, I think he will be popular with the players. But I'm not sure whether he's made it impossible for the FA to appoint him by his reluctance and the fact that he said, you know, you need a top, top, top manager. And at the moment, that's not me. That's paraphrasing him. Yeah. But that's effectively what he said. Well, you used the word earlier, Jeff, ambition. You know, does it show a lack of ambition because he's not putting his nail to the flag? He's not gone, I, I want this job. Is that a lack of ambition? Because he's never, ever going to be in this position again. Hmm. I think that's a fair point, isn't it? He's, he's not going to be in a position of no. having the job uh, literally in the palm of his hand, certainly before the defeat against Greece, that everyone felt that he's naturally going to get results, he'll get offered the job and he'll take it. Let's get some quick calls on this one then, shall we? Di, the Pompey fan, has decided to give us a call. Morning, Di. Hi, Di. Uh, morning, morning, Jeff. Morning, Kaz. Um, I was just, yeah, just having, obviously there seems to be a lot of debate on this and it has been for, since Gareth really left. Clearly, the FA don't have a plan or don't have a preferred choice. Otherwise, they would have appointed someone. Now, Cash, you said earlier on about the uh, you know the, the, the FA um, wouldn't appoint someone like Warnock, someone like Harry, because they're outspoken. But they've gone for the, all the yes men. I mean, I like um, Gareth Southgate. No issues there whatsoever. They've tried that. Now, the FA either need to understand what they actually want. Do they want to win a major honour since '66, or do they want uh, you know a yes man? And so they need to decide what they want to do. But look, there's two years. You've got a two-year campaign to the World Cup. Why not put your pride down or whatever it is getting in the way? 
Harry Redknapp's been in retirement for a little while. Mm. Say to him, we've got a two-year, we've got a two-year campaign. Get us to the World Cup, Harry, and go and win it. And why won't the FA do that? Clearly, there's no other plan. Um, but you also said earlier on when your betting guy came on, and you talked about we need um, somebody that's great with the media, somebody that's a great man manager. For me, that, that's Harry Redknapp. Whether he's old school or not, we, we're trying to win a major honour, and we're not going to do that by being all really you know, nice about it. Oh, we're bringing food to St George's Park. I get that, and I understand why they're doing that. But actually, we need to win a major honour. So uh, why don't you just go and get Harry Redknapp? I don't get it. Di, I mean, Harry is a brilliant bloke, but it would absolutely ruin his golf handicap. And I think that's <laughs> that's one of the reasons why he won't take it. Di, thank you very much indeed. Let's hear the thoughts of Fred, the Liverpool fan. Morning, Fred. Morning. Hi, Fred. I think without a shadow of a doubt, I did say um, the Liverpool, ex- Liverpool manager, but he's gone to uh, Red Bull. What were I thinking now, Pep Guardiola? Because you get him and you say to him, look, you've done everything, you've won everything. This would be a feather in your cap. You'd be making history for yourself and for England. And then if you want to go to Spain, you do that and win for Spain after us, but us first. Yeah. Because 2026, in line with 1966, when we lost one at uh, Fred, thank you very much. Uh, Pep said uh, yesterday, he said, I've not decided anything. Everything can happen. I don't know. Let's see on my future. I still need to reflect and decide what I want to do. Let's squeeze one more in. Tony is an Everton fan. Morning, Tony. Have a show, gentlemen, again. Thank um, you. Credit where credit's due. Well, uh, the name Sean Dyche hasn't been mentioned. He's, he's English. Why, why not him be considered? Because... Um, He's never going to win anything with uh, Everton with, with the players that we've got, but mm. surely he got his chance to win a World Cup. Yeah, I think it's always Tony. It's a tough one because look, yeah. the, the the FA would always want to make it a popular appointment as well, you know. And and Sean Dyche wouldn't be a popular appointment because of where the woes of Everton are, and uh, you know, it hasn't won anything. Lee Carsley has opened up and said, "Well, the manager has to be proven at the highest level, being successful," and that doesn't tick the box. I don't think it would make that that appointment very difficult. Uh, Tony, thank you very much indeed for your call. Uh, big sporting upset, it's one we haven't mentioned, but two people have mentioned it in a heartbeat, really. Uh, morning, guys. Martin here, director at Sutton United. Who can forget non-league Sutton overturning First Division Coventry in the FA Cup in 1989, only two years after Coventry had won the Cup? Same point made by Mark in Lancaster. I was there the night they did it. It was an amazing night down at Gander Green Lane. Sensational. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6 a.m. on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.